Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is a kitchen declutter. So I did this back in February. This was kind of like my February project. I like to declutter a lot during the beginning of the year when it's winter here. It's really cold and just dreary so it helps pass the winter time and I just worked on this a little bit every day so it didn't feel overwhelming. So I usually make a list, so that was kind of the beginning of my list that I had made. And I like to start with an area that is like easily done, like the drawers, so that's where we're starting. I haven't made one in a while, but back in the wintertime I was really into making simmer pots, so I was getting one of those going before I got started, so I was just doing some cloves and some cinnamon on this day, I think, but it made the house smell so, so good. So I didn't necessarily think I was going to end up getting rid of a lot of things from the kitchen, but I did really want to go through everything and make sure that it was something I needed or I was going to use. And I wanted to get things like tidied up a bit. I find the kitchen is um, one of those areas you just have a lot of things in the kitchen and it can get like untidy and messy just because there's so many things and you're using so many things. So Anyway, we're going to start with this drawer where I keep my plastic bags. So a few years ago, I actually made this holder because um, I didn't want to pay for one. So I just used some poster board and some uh, contact paper that was like wood grain and a utensil holder. And it worked out great. And it was, I think I already had the utensil holder. So I think it ended up costing like $3 to make. And I love it. It works exactly like the ones that are I don't know I think they were like $50 on Amazon at the time and so I just wash and reuse my plastic bags that shot of uh, them I just wash them and hang them to dry over that little tree thing that I just showed so I just keep my plastic bags in here I do keep some saran wrap in here which I don't actually use very often so one roll usually lasts a year and a half or more <laughs> and then i do have some parchment paper in there as well which was too big to fit in my little holder on the wall so i just keep it in there um and then i did notice when i took the saran wrap about that i had these little stickers i used to use these when i would give people like baked goods during the holidays but i don't really do that anymore so uh, I decided to just um, let those go because they've been sitting there for a couple of years, so. And then in the very back is where I keep the really big bags that I use. Um, I do a lot of like freezer prep, so that's kind of why I like having these bags. So um, I've had this box forever, it's kind of falling apart. <laughs> um, but I had all the bags used and then I noticed that the same size were on sale. For a really good deal so that was the perfect time to buy more so I ended up getting this 60 pack which means I probably won't have to buy these again the rest of my life um maybe but they do last for a long time people always wonder like how long the bags actually last I find freezer bags because they're a little bit thicker they actually like I've had some of these bags that I've been washing and reusing for probably five or six years maybe even longer like I don't have to buy them like other than buying those big ones. I haven't bought them in I don't know how long. And then I do have some reusable bags as well that I just keep kind of tucked in the front and I definitely wanted to keep those. And then I forgot that I had these, but you use them to like open jars and stuff if you're having a hard time, which is me always. Um, uh, but I did notice that they came in a four pack and I thought I don't really need four. So I just kept two and I'll donate the other two because I mean, I guess like something could happen to one and then I'll have a backup, but four, like I felt like it was unnecessary. I have these little clips in here too um, that I thought I should keep in there, but I was hopeful that I could just refill this box so that it would fit in the back and it worked out and I'll just keep all of the extras downstairs. Um, but it's been so long since I bought them. They actually have like a different design, which actually seems like it will be better. And I just keep some paper bags in here as well. I mainly just use these for like mushrooms. They're good for keeping mushrooms from like 
like I find when that you get them in the plastic sometimes they can go a little bit like slimy I usually just lay those on top of the bag holder but one thing that I did want to put in there was I use this when I'm doing uh, meal prep and food prep uh, a sharpie and then the painter's tape I find that works really well so I wanted to uh, make sure that I could fit those things in there because I'm always having to go look for it so it was one of the things that I wanted to make sure I did and I have to say uh, I just love the feeling of getting a space really cleaned and organized it just feels so good so I was very happy that I got that set up I felt like that was a good setup so on this day I did that drawer and then I also did the silverware drawer which I knew wasn't going to be um like there's not a lot going on in there uh I do like to keep a pretty organized house so usually when I'm doing this like the things are still pretty organized it's just sometimes things get a little bit messy or there are things that you think you might use and then you don't end up using so anyway this is the silverware drawer in the very back behind I keep things that I don't use that often but that I do use so um, that pastry thing is a great example <laughs> like I don't use it very often but when I need it I want to make sure I have it I have in the past I used to be a pretty um, hardcore minimalist and I found that I ended up getting rid of a lot of things that I ended up repurchasing because I would think like oh I never use that but then I would eventually like want to use it or need to use it and have to rebuy it so I've like found a better balance I think in life so I also have this burger press this is one that I thrifted a few years ago I think it's vintage I was trying to show if a brand would show up but the lighting and reflection at least I can't see it with my eyes um, and then there's another one in there I decided to keep the other one as well, but if I don't use it in the next year, I'm going to let it go. It was a free gift um, that I got, and the Apple thing is one of my, like, I don't use it all that much, but it is a great, uh, a great kitchen tool to have. It, like, cores and slices of apples for you, so I do use it a lot more, probably, like, during fall time, um, but then I did notice that a little plastic fork made it back there we usually keep all that stuff in the car um that way if we like need it or um you just like have it and I recently like went through the car and organized a bunch so I put that with the other things um my rolling pin just fits right in next to the silverware container uh, which is great and then a little scraper fits in there perfect and this um, silverware holder is actually vintage I think I bought it for like a quarter at a yard sale or flea market um, quite a few years ago now but I just love it so there's a few things that I knew for sure that like I always use that knife and my knife for cutting lettuce the plastic one I knew that I never used that other knife so it was time to let that go and this little scoop, I think this came with um, maybe like a protein powder or greens powder. Um, I ke do keep um, my like serving silverware in a different area in the dining room. So definitely was knew that I didn't need that knife anymore. I kept it because I thought, oh, maybe I might use it. But I realized that I could reuse the scoop over here in the little coffee area. I got this espresso maker and it came with a plastic... Um, it was like a dual ended so one was the scoop and the other end was like the tamp but it was just horrible trying to use a plastic tamp so I had immediately just went on Amazon and ordered um, like a stainless steel one so I was still using the scoop but I realized that I could just get rid of that and keep the smaller scoop so that's what I went ahead and did so I was feeling uh, I did move the K cups the reusable K cups over here because I realized that was probably a better spot for them but uh, I was feeling so good after I got started on this day and then the the little clips are magnetic so I figured I'd just stick those on the fridge but yeah I was feeling really great after just doing this little bit this day it probably only took 15 or 20 minutes total but I find just getting started um, 
even with something simple like that it can be like so motivating to keep you going so I think this was the very next day I decided to do the other two drawers which I only have four in the whole kitchen so now this one looks like a crazy hot mess because I guess it is a little bit but this is all like mostly all just kitchen gadgets which again sometimes you don't use them that much but it is nice to have them when you need to and then some you use all the time so I uh, I knew that this was my old grater that had broken, like the handle had broken off it a long time ago, and I had recently um, got this square one that fits over a container, so it's actually very handy, and it has more than one size, so I knew I was going to keep that, get rid of the other one, I'm just going to toss the other one since it's broken. And then uh, I do have this tray in here that kind of separates things, but things get a little bit messy sometimes. So uh, that's why I like to take the time to like go through it and give it a good organize, see if there's anything that I need to get rid of that I'm not ever going to use. But for the most part, I think I kept most things. So I ended up just taking the tray out and setting it on the counter because I thought that would be easier so I could kind of go through and look at everything so in the very front part is where I keep the measuring cups and measuring spoons because I use those things the most um, and I have two sets because sometimes it's just helpful to have two sets uh, and then I just keep a few little things like my little mini whisk I definitely use that this is for garlic definitely use that as well and then there's another little mini uh, grater that I do use sometimes as well. It's good for like, um, I usually use like lemon and lime zest. Plus I just think it's super cute. So those things fit in there nicely. Those things I reach for like pretty regularly. I try to organize in that way as well. And then I actually forgot that I had these, um, but they're, you put like the thing through the cat's mouth so it looks like a little tongue, but it's sort of like a tie. Um, I think there's three different ones. So now that I remember that they're in there, I'll probably use them more. But if you're gonna like tie a bag or something, So this organizer is nice because it leaves just enough room on the side for some things and then I do the same thing where I put like the least used things in the back. So this is for making like tarts with like pie dough, which again I don't use it very often but um, I feel like I want to have it when I do want to use it. But on the side I can fit my can opener and my like lemon lime squeezer um, and then also the baster which I don't use that very often so I just but it fits in there. Um, along the side perfect with the other two things. I definitely use the can opener a lot and the lemon juicer. Then I have some vintage gadgets that I thrifted a long time ago. Uh, one is an onion like you Put it down to the onion when you're cutting it to keep it in place and i also have this cake tester which i love these all came like new in the package they look like they were from the late 70s early 80s by the packaging um so i definitely wanted to keep those and then also uh, i've got a melon baller with two different sizes and then also i've got this i think it's called a butter curler you like run it along a stick of butter and it makes like a fancy little rolled up thing of butter I guess I don't think I've ever actually used it but I just want to keep it for that maybe I'll use it I always think I'll use it in a video like maybe if I'm making a recipe or something so then I just have a bunch of other things laid out here I have a like a handheld mixer I don't actually use it that much though so I'm just I keep the beaters for that back there and then it came with another set um which I've never actually used I'm guessing maybe it's like a dough hook or something. I don't know, I've never used them before, but I've kept them in case I ever want to sell the hand mixer. That way it's like all together. 
And then this is another vintage gadget. It's like a cheese slicer. And my parents actually had the same one. Um, and so it's very nostalgic for me. I don't use it that much. So I usually just use a knife, but I keep it back there. And then uh, I've got like a pizza cutter. It's just like an inexpensive pizza cutter that we've had forever. Um, definitely use that frequently enough that it can be in the front part. And I've got my little veggie spiralizer. It, uh, I usually use it for zucchini make zucchini noodles and then I definitely use my cookie scoop a lot <laughs> it's actually life-changing using a cookie scoop and then I've got the peeler which I don't use it that much but I mean it's something you should have the muffin scoop I don't use as much so I just put that in the back and then these tongs I'm actually gonna toss because since we've got the air fryer um it's said you know to use tongs that had uh like a rubber kind of, you know, so that you're not scratching the, um, the inside of the air fryer. That's what I'm trying to say. So I did end up purchasing, I found this two pack at my dollar store and it, they're a little bit smaller too. So it worked out perfect that they would fit in here. And I've been loving having these actually. So I did get rid of the other tongs. And then I keep uh, my cooking utensils on the counter in a little crock, um, like a little container, but I ended up uh, getting rid of my old ones. As you can see, they're very well used and worn, and I got a new set, which I thought I took a video of, but I didn't see it anywhere on my phone. So I did have an extra space in the little container. Um, and I remembered that I have been saving bread tags in this little uh, Pyrex fridge container, which was actually my grandma's. Uh, so I thought that I would just go ahead and put those in this drawer. Um, here where I live in Canada, at least, um, they don't use the plastic ones anymore. They just use cardboard ones, which is great, but they're not really great for reusing. And I like to reuse them like when I make homemade bread or something and freeze it. Um, so I've just been, I've, I've been collecting them for I don't know, like a decade or more at least, like way before they stopped using them, just because I like to reuse them. Eventually, after so many years, the plastic ones will generally break as well, but um, you can still get like a lot more reuse out of them. So I definitely just uh, was feeling so good on this day, getting everything nice and tidy. So I added the tongs to the pile, the two things to get rid of. And then I decided to work on my spice drawer, so uh, this wasn't necessarily like something that needed to be decluttered, but um, I did want to give it a tidy and refill my spices. So I got the cinnamon sticks and everything recently to start making the simmer pots. This little, um, I think you can buy them now pretty inexpensively, but I made this one out of poster board and contact paper like I don't know, 2015, and I still use it. Some of you might remember if you're here from my other channel from a long time ago, because I think I did made that in a video, like back then. But in behind the spices, I have a little container back here, and I usually keep all of the spices that I need to refill the most. So, and I keep a little set of funnels back there as well to do that. And then the most used spices I keep in my little vintage spice holder over here it's like spice of life theme and then i uh, keep the rest of the backup spices up here in the cupboard in this little container uh, we have a very like odd configuration kitchen cabinets which i think you get maybe a better look at later in the video but I don't know I'm, I'm torn between like wanting all new cabinets and wanting to keep these ones because they're probably a much better quality than you would get today so anyway I wanted to get all of the spices refilled and restocked and everything um, and then I was also uh, made a list of all the ones that I needed that I was either low on or out of
I honestly love having my spices in a drawer like this. I feel like it's just so uh, convenient, especially like I cook from scratch a lot, so I'm always in here using it. So anyway, I got that all filled up and then I was going to put all these cinnamon sticks in a like small Ziploc bag just so it wasn't open. So I did that and then um, this is perfectly kind of ready to go. I did want to get a few more spice bottles though. There's one in there that's like not the same and I just got these these are pretty inexpensive. I think you can get them on Amazon, but I think I just bought them at my dollar store. I think they come in packs of three or something. So got all of those done. And then above my stove, I also have this little like kind of half cupboard <laughs> above the hood. And I organized this last year and I love the way it turned out and it stayed really well organized. But I make a lot of my own spices too. So I needed to make some more taco seasoning. So I usually do that whenever I'm like filling up the spices, I try to just get everything done all at once. So I got that taken care of and then got all the backup spices back in the uh, container. And then you can see like, I have another container back here, I can like barely reach, I have to stand on like on my tippy toes, <laughs> like I can barely get it. Um, so this is where the kitchen is like a little bit weird so there's all this dead space that essentially you can't really get to i've tried to make the best of it but um this is in this container i keep backup things for the pantry um so we not as much anymore because it's like an hour away but we used to buy pretty much everything at the bulk store we still buy some things there but and then this is what my pantry upstairs looks like it's basically just bulk ingredients in mason jars so it does take up a lot of space but I do really like having my pantry set up this way I do a lot of cooking from scratch and I've been I've had it set up this way for I think like 12 or 13 years and it's just it really works so I just stick with stick with that and then on the so in this one that's what I keep up there just extra things and I have this tea and coffee in the middle and then on the bottom uh, shelf I have things like oils and vinegars and things I cook with. And then in this top one, I just keep uh, things for popcorn as well as like spices that I buy. So um, I did not plan on doing this on the same day as the spices, but I just, I felt so motivated um, that I did end up doing it. And then I knew that I had a few things down here in the bottom that like I just didn't have room for and I just kind of shoved in here, probably during the holidays. It's like this uh, brown rice and then um, more brown rice. <laughs> and so I was trying to get everything collected. And then in the back there was a bin that had extra baking things in it that I knew was back there, but I really wanted to get that out and see what I had and see what I could fill up. I think I show you in the next clip maybe, or maybe this one, but I do have like a baking kind of cupboard. It's actually like a microwave stand, but I don't have a microwave in the kitchen, so just basically use it for my cookbooks and for all of my baking things. So this is like a hot mess from the holidays. And so I definitely wanted to get that cleaned up as well and see what I had for extra baking things. And I don't know, I have a lot of different kinds of flour that I use. And there's probably like 10 different containers of flowers down there but I need to like figure out something because it's almost like overflowing now there's like too many to fit so here you can see what I was talking about <laughs> I just have so many um but the ones that I use the most in the bigger containers and I actually was able to like recycle all these bigger glass jars from the place that I used to work we used to get like hot peppers in them and I think something else came in one and they would just let me take them home instead of like recycling them there so I gathered a lot of these over I don't know I worked there for like eight years I think um so I was able to just get a bunch <laughs> but which is very handy because buying those new would be um pretty expensive so um yeah it's basically like at max capacity now I think but then I have like other smaller things up here I also just recycled these jars from like either pickles or salsa and yeah so I really wanted to get that straightened out I don't think that I got the full thing straightened out 
uh, during this video. I did film more that's not in this video, so maybe I'll do like a part two of other things. Like I went through all of my dishes, like those cupboards and different things. Um, but I'm feeling so good having the whole thing done now. It's been like a couple of months, but... And while I was in here digging around, I did find the corn syrup that I thought wasn't there anymore. It was like in the very back in a weird spot where I just wasn't visible. Uh, I, use, I never use corn syrup, but I used it in a vintage recipe. Um, so I went to make that recipe again. I was like, oh, we don't have corn syrup. So I, I used something else in place of it, but and it turned out fine. So I'll probably do that from now on, but I will use up this corn syrup. So I love the bird's packaging. I think it's the exact same packaging, like from the 50s. Um, it's just so cute. It makes me want to like display it, but it's accidentally vegan. I didn't know that until fairly recently and uh, so I bought some but I haven't used it yet and then I do take the opportunity to like wash out all the containers that are empty so I was doing that as well or even ones that are almost empty I'll just pour out what remains and wash the container so but I had some boxes that you can see that like especially the pasta that just wouldn't fit in the container so I ended up uh, I wanted to get like all of this kind of cleaned up and taken care of so that it looked um, neat again. And I have like that area in the basement where we keep like I call it the mini grocery store so. I keep a lot of the things down there as well um but i found that pasta that i bought that was like fall themed that i never ended up using so i put that down in the grocery store area but i definitely want to do something with that um this fall which i'll probably share and then uh so while i was doing all this cleaning and filling i was also writing down a list of everything that i was out of and that i needed more of I also really wanted to get green lids for these ones that have blue lids on them. It's just that they didn't have green lids at the time, and so I just bought the blue ones, but it bugs me every single time I open the door. It's something stupid, but I don't know. I just like it when things look aesthetic, I guess. So there was a few... Um, there was a few jars in here that I knew that I didn't actually need anymore, like this. I used to make homemade, um, like, faux chicken broth but I found a brand that I just buy now that's really good so I don't feel like I need to make it so I was going to repurpose the jars that um, like that had just been sitting there for a long time so I was going to repurpose some and figure all that out just do like a really deep kind of clean and organize and set up here so that I knew where I stood with everything and I knew um, what I needed to buy and so these jars are like three deep, but I try to kind of group them together in like items. So I've been doing it for so long that I know exactly what is in every row, even though I can't see the ones in the back. So it's um, it like it might seem like it would be really inconvenient, but like I just know what's there because I've been doing it for so long. And I love the labeler that I use, like the embossed labeler. So I was redoing some jars and then uh, I had washed a bunch and I was letting those air dry. And uh, this is one of the most questions I've been asked like over the years is where I get these jars from. I actually get these from my dollar store. So um, I had asked John to look to see if they had more green ones and they did have some. So he ended up getting me four packs. Now, when I started doing this way back then, the, everything in the dollar store was either $1 or $2. So you used to be able to get three for $2. And now the jars are actually a little bit smaller than they used to be. So the my original ones that I've had, since I started doing this probably in 2010 are a little bit bigger um, but I have this weird awkward cupboard next to like it's such a weird thing that I couldn't really think of what to put in here so I just put my extra jars in here but this area gets really messy too so I wanted to get that I think this was the next day that I was doing this after the whole pantry thing so I just ended up taking everything out so I could wash the cupboard out and just figure out what I needed to keep, what I didn't. I make a lot of homemade sauces and things, so I'll put them in these jars in the fridge. And 
and I keep a lot of my lids here in this little container in there as well. Uh, some of them are blank, but some of them I've actually gone ahead and, um, you know, put a label on them because I make them so frequently that that way I can just put those, put the that lid on it and I know what it is in there. So kind of have all of those organized there and yeah I just wanted to I wanted it to look nicer but I also wanted to really think do I need all of these like what do I actually use and what do I never reach for so I did end up getting things a lot more organized in there I reused some of the like cardboard boxes that the new ones came in up top there to kind of keep things corralled and then here on the bottom shelf I mentioned I keep a lot of my like oils and vinegars and things I try to buy this stuff in the biggest size I can to save money and then uh, I just went out and bought containers or I get a small size container to just keep reusing I wanted it to all fit in here so the awkwardness of this cupboard I just put a lazy Susan just kind of pushed back into that space and that way I can spin it around but it gives me a little more space so um I wanted to get all of this stuff filled up as well and cleaned so that way it was good and this middle one just has a bunch of kind of coffee and tea things a lot of it is empty now and I really wanted to change this into something different I wanted to be able to use it for like food items that I've brought up from the like what I call my grocery store uh, that I was going to need for that week of meals and then I could just store them there and then kind of have everything ready to go for the week. So that was kind of my idea. And then I figured I could put the coffee and tea in a, a different area. So I just went ahead and filled up all of my, all of my things. So then I took down all of those jars that, these are all reused, I think, from salsa. Um, a lot of them were empty, though, so uh, I just kind of figured out, like, a lot of them had flavored, different flavored coffees in them, or different teas, but I have this whole different area in the kitchen where... Um, You've seen it in the beginning of the video where I have the espresso machine. Well, I just wanted that area to contain all of the teas and different coffees and things. So that was kind of my plan. And then also in the baking cupboard, like in the top part, I remembered I had a bunch of tea bags in in there. So I was like, I need to just get this all figured out. And so over here, um, I kind of had it like set up at Christmas. And then I just kind of left it after that. And then there's some things just randomly stacked over here as well. So I was like, okay, I need to figure this out. And I wanted to put the most used, like the tea that we use the most in these little jars. And then at Christmas, I had like hot chocolate there and little mini marshmallows. And so I wanted to just get that all figured out. So I was considering buying like a holder for the tea bag. So I was looking on Amazon, but I just really feel like they're really expensive for what they are. So I had leftover little boxes and I thought, well, maybe I could just use one of these boxes and make like a little tea holder. And I knew that I had some like, I just save all the scrap contact paper that I use just in case so I knew I had some like scrap wood grain coffee or not coffee contact paper downstairs so I went and got that and covered one of the boxes with it and I think it looks fine for what I, I just really wanted something to hold all of the tea that it was like out where I could see it um so that I would you know remember to drink it and stuff so I think it looks fine it pretty much looks like what I was looking at on Amazon except this was free versus the $25 Amazon was wanting so I think it was pretty cool and then I just put the tea that we drink the most that's like loose so I drink this peppermint green tea it's a candy cane lane tea, tea tea is what it's called and then I put um the hot chocolate stuff over there and I have all the extra like flavored coffees in those white containers and then yeah so anyway it's not 
perfect but um it's much better than it was and everything's all together in an area which i really like so anyway um i hope you guys enjoyed this video maybe it gave you some cleaning motivation or some decluttering motivation my biggest tip is like to start with something small it will definitely it can definitely like boost your motivation and like make you feel good so um like even just taking like 20 minutes to do a drawer or two can just make such a big impact I feel like the kitchen is one of those areas like I mentioned it just has so much stuff in it but it's a lot of stuff that you need even if you don't use it regularly so it can just be very overwhelming but also if it's not like tidy it can make you like not want to get in there and cook too so it's just it's a very beneficial space to tidy up and declutter so anyway um thank you so much for watching i know i haven't been posting for a little bit um you know just mental health struggles um but um i do have a bunch of videos already filmed so hopefully i can just get it together and start posting regularly but anyway thank you so much for watching and for your support and hopefully i will see you again soon with a new video